Maka's guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maka here and welcome to another 100% full game walkthrough. This time I'll be taking you through Jusson and in this video over the next roughly three hours, we'll be going through the entire story and grabbing all 100 plus collectibles. Doing this will also get you all of the achievements in the game if that's something you're after as well. From the main menu, I'm going to launch right into a new game because there is a little bit of a cutscene that kind of starts us off. So I'll be talking through it a little bit. But basically, this is an action platforming game about pretty much rock climbing made by Don't Nod, a French studio, which is why we have a little bit of that French influence in the title as well. This is a pretty chill game where you can kind of sit back, relax, and after maybe five or six hours, it's something you would probably finish the story of on your own. But there are over 100 collectibles, most of which are pretty easy, but there are a couple of tricky ones along the way. Luckily, also, if you do complete the game, that will unlock chapter select. So if you do miss anything, you can use chapter select to go back and mop up. But a collectibles guide for this game is not necessarily very easy to follow just because of how often there is a collectible. Every one or two minutes, you'll come across a collectible. So I think for most people, a video like this should hopefully be more useful than something like a collectibles guide, which I decided not to do for a game like this. This game did come out, I believe, in September or October of 2023. So I have taken my time making this video, but I hope it's helpful nonetheless. And I'd like to thank you if you've waited for my video. I really appreciate the support. If you think the video is uh, good, you can leave a like if you believe that I have earned it. Uh, from the beginning here, though, there is a little bit of a cutscene. The story is, you know, kind of very show and tell. It's not told to you directly, but it is definitely shown to you. But kind of the, the basic premise, if you want to follow along for now without spoiling anything, is that you play this little boy and this little boy will be climbing this giant kind of tower sorry as i uh, connect my headset here they'll be um climbing this giant tower to reach the top for one reason or another which will become more and more clear kind of as we play so in order to get our completion we will need to complete the game we will need to get all 105 of the collectibles which are uh, spread amongst different types of collectibles we'll go through all of that as we play You'll also need to do a couple of miscellaneous tasks that I'll make sure to show you along the way. And there might be a couple of minutes of grinding kind of near the end of the game with a couple of achievements you may or may not earn just based on your play style. I'll make sure to explain how to play and, and what the controls are and everything as we're getting into the game here pretty quick. Um, I'll make sure to go a slightly slower pace at the beginning, but as you get more and more used to the controls, I'm going to be picking it up a little bit speeding it up if you find yourself maybe struggling to keep up with my pace you're free to launch the video on youtube and uh, play it at 75 percent speed for some people that might be a little bit more helpful but we're getting finally launched into the game here and it is a third person game so you'll be pretty familiar with the controls you'll move your character with the left stick you can move the camera with the right stick and uh, because we're kind of launching right in the tutorial uh, you'll kind of be told everything else you need from there on out. So we're going to move forward. Chapter 1, Daymark. You'll be told that you can climb a ledge with the A button. And you can do that pretty much on every ledge in the game that your character can reach. For climbing, you're going to come up to these types of items or just walls in general. And you're going to be using your left trigger for your left hand and your right trigger for your right hand. So generally, you want to just alternate. I'm going to go left hand push up to reach with my right hand, hold the right trigger to grip with my right hand, release left, and you're basically going to be alternating the left and right triggers to alternate your left and right hand until you kind of reach the top, and then you can climb on up. You'll automatically also be uh, like kind of roped to the wall with the blue rope, so falling in this game really doesn't have that much of a penalty pretty often. You might just get like something like a checkpoint that you kind of have to restart at. And once you do reach the top of a large ledge, you want to wind your rope in by holding the B button. And you just want to make sure you do that so you don't get caught uh, with your rope kind of at the bottom of the uh, section you just climbed. And then we're just going to continue along. And for these ledges, you can't really fall off unless you were to like jump or miss your jump. So it's going to be a pretty basic game here. We're going to continue on to this blue rope. 
And again, left trigger, right trigger, and just alternate those while you're reaching up in the direction that you want to travel. You can do this really, really fast, but I don't want to, I'm not trying to speed run the game here while you're trying to keep along with me. Once you do reach here, you kind of have to go in a little bit. These are always good waypoints to tell you where you're supposed to go because that's where your character is going to, uh, you know, pretty much get themselves situated before they start climbing automatically. So if there's one nearby, that means you can cl um, climb nearby. And then for this one here, you do have to move a little bit to the left before you can make your way to the top of the ledge, winding your rope back in as well. And then here, there's a little bit of a newer mechanic. What you want to do is you want to just move to the left and the right. It can be a little bit more difficult to reach. So just make sure you see that your hand is actually going to grab a part of the ledge. And then you can hold X to basically make a temporary new uh, anchor in the wall that will just allow you to fall basically and you won't fall you know all the way down if i were to let go right now i'm tied to this new point on the wall i just want to make sure you understand all the mechanics i don't think it's very useful for me to just show you what to do in the game and not explain to you why you're doing them or how they work uh, hold a to basically prep a jump release a to do that jump and then uh, use your left and right triggers to grab where you're jumping to and then you can move on You'll notice now that we also have a stamina bar in green on the right hand side. Basically, if you jump too much or, uh, you know, do too many movements without taking a break, you can lose your stamina and, um, you know, then you would kind of let go. Similar to many action adventure games here. Once you reach here, you want to create a new anchor. I believe it's a piton, which is a, uh, a French word, but uh, in order to try not speaking too much French in this video. I'll, I'll just call them an anchor. We're going to hold and load that jump, catching ourselves at the top there, climbing up a little bit. And here you can click in the left stick to rest, which will regenerate your stamina bar. That's a part of the tutorial as well. We're still pretty much very, very early on in the game. It gets much more complicated. I thought it was a little bit too easy when I first started, but it definitely gets more complicated and, and more interesting as you play. So once you reach the top here, let's go into this little cave and then follow up this ledge to our right hand side. And then we'll go up this ladder that uh, comes up this uh, rock face. You really can't get lost in this game. There's very few kind of open large areas where you can take a wrong turn. Most of them do lead to a collectible anyways. But once you reach the top of this wall, let me show you the first collectible of our game, which is on the table right here. And it's a letter. We can press Y to interact with it. Feel free to read it. If it's your first letter of the game, you'll also unlock an achievement here, uh, which I already have unlocked. We can then move on a little bit, go towards the sunlight, go towards the edge here, anchor yourself into the wall, and then basically you can use the left bumper to drop down really low. And here we're going to be doing a little bit of a wall run. We will have to wall run to the right. And then wall run all the way to the left to grab up onto this ledge. This is how you're supposed to get over here. So basically, that just taught you that if you're anchored, you can use your left and right bumper to go up and down. In this side room on the right side, there's basically shortcuts that let you loop back around to where you came from. We're not going to use these very often in the game, but if you're wondering what these do, it allows you to loop back down where you came from in a faster way than kind of going in reverse. And then we're going to climb up this ledge and we're going to find our second collectible of the game to our left hand side, which is the shell. This is your first shell of the game and picking this up should unlock another achievement for you. So hopefully it did. And you feel free to enjoy this little cutscene. But if you press and hold B, eventually you will be able to kind of back out of this. Uh, I believe you're kind of forced to watch the first kind of, I don't know, 20 seconds here. I believe when you can quit out of this little cutscene, you will get a prompt in the bottom right hand corner, which will let you know to hold B to quit. You can also just let this continue playing on the on loop if you find it enjoying or, or you know, comforting or whatever. But we're definitely going to quit out kind of as soon as we get the chance there. Obviously, we're going to have to find all of the letters and all of the shells, and there's a couple more collectible types to go. But once we're ready, we can climb up, alternating left and right to get up this ladder. Hopefully nice and easily. Uncling yourself from the wall. And then go to the right hand side here into this room. 
looking into here, press Y to find yet another uh, letter slash scroll here. We can quit out. You can pause the game and you can go to your letters to see the letters you have. I obviously have a couple more because of how I'm recording this. Uh, and there's also things that you can kind of find in the gallery. So there are ways to kind of keep track of some of the collectibles as you're playing. And now what we can do is go here and you want to anchor yourself to the wall. Once you're ready, you can basically just drop down off the ledge. You want to use the left bumper to go down a little bit. And you want to swing to the right and then swing to the left with the goal being to basically catch onto that far wall. You can see a little bit of a semicircle on the wall so that you know like kind of how far down you're supposed to be. And if you're do doing it correctly, it should look something like this. You can then kind of jump up the ledges or you can just alternate that left and that right. Kind of depending on where you land and how far you can reach. Just continue climbing to the top here. Wind your rope up once you reach the top. And then you can move forward and to the left here. Once in here, there is a somewhat tricky letter. You want to go up these uh, this ladder here. You can hold and then jump to the top here. Make sure you grab on once you reach the top and then shimmy over to the right. Once you do reach the right a little bit, you do want to get up to the very top instead of going all the way across. For this kind of tricky collectible you want to come down near where this ladder is and then underneath go into this kind of uh, hallway between the wooden boards to find another letter from here we're going to basically continue to climb up and we're trying to just basically get up for most of the game you're just you know you're just basically trying to get to the very top of this uh, giant kind of rock so we're going to come back to where we came from, unhook ourselves here, and then use uh, this upper walkway to get to the end. You can place your anchor here, um, and you basically are going to be climbing up and following the uh, texture of the cave walls here. You're going to be kind of hanging from like the top, but just keep alternating the left and the right bumpers. Place your anchors if you do need one. Hold, jump uh, up top make sure you grab if you do need to grab you may not be able to get there you might need to do a double jump like here in order to get to the top holding b to unanchor yourself and we can continue a little bit forward here here you'll be introduced to a little bit of a new mechanic you might see these uh, anchors far away and up top hold x to basically throw your rope to attach to them and then you can just pull yourself right up using the right bumper. And then you want to swing and jump when you are ready, pulling your rope with you to continue forward. Let's continue climbing up as much as we can, alternating the left and the right bumper to do it as quickly as possible or as quickly as you're comfortable with. does involve a little bit of a, a jump and load here just to make sure you can get across some of these kind of smaller uh, little chunks of space where there is nothing to grab onto. Feel free to rest often. There is an achievement for like resting a certain amount of times. Um, you don't have to. We can kind of grind it at the end of the game within five minutes, but it's a lot better to not have to uh, fall down halfway through your climb because you lack the stamina. Basically just going to keep climbing up here. We might need to jump a little bit here. And then move to the left to land on this ledge. Bring your rope up with you. You'll come into this large gap here. And what you want to do is you want to use this ladder that kind of ends up behind you as you enter the area. Climb up and pull your rope up with you. Go to the right here and you will end up here in this area. You're inside in, of this kind of large cave, but on the outside you'll see this tall, large tower. Now before we go for that tower, there are two collectibles in the cave section. So kind of turn around and loop around to the other side of the large pit. 
you can't really fall off here, uh, or at least do it very easily, so you should be able to just make your way across no problem. And there is a new collectible type right here, which is called a cairn. I believe these are just like rock piles. In, um, in Canada, we call them anukshuk, but uh, I guess depending on who built them is what they're called. So that's your first cairn of the game. There's many more to go. And then if you go up the staircase right next to it and stick to the left-hand side, you can find another letter. So make sure you pick that up. Sometimes they're letters, sometimes they're scrolls, but the uh, game mostly refers to them just as letters simply. We can then start heading back towards the large tower in front of us. Like I was saying, this game starts out more on the basic end, but it does pick up in its complexity and personally in my enjoyment of it. So let's walk towards that large tower in front of us. On your way to this tower, right before you reach the staircase that leads up the tower, uh, the camera should adjust back to you, by the way, after a while. It tries to be a little bit cinematic, but instead of going up the tower, let's go to the right-hand side here. There's a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a secret area, but there's a little bit of a side area here, and we can find our next letter. This area actually happens to be pretty dense in collectibles. Two more to go very close by. Follow the outer edge to the right-hand side. You'll end up behind near these boats, and there is another cairn, so let's grab that. And then from there, we can climb up this ladder right in front of us. At the top of the ladder, you want to turn to the left. And if you hook around to that left-hand side, you'll find another letter, so grab that too. Now we're ready to actually start climbing the tower a little bit on our way to our next collectible and more progress in the actual game. So work your way up the stairs, up the tower. You'll come into your first area. You can just walk across it and then continue up the tower using the stairs to get up to one level higher. Once you reach this level up here, go into the kind of lighthouse, look to the left and use the X command to pull down the bridge. Doing this will allow us to walk across the bridge and grab Bianca's letter. All right, and there's going to be one more collectible before we end off the chapter, um, but we're just going to be going towards our objective by climbing up right here on the side of the this kind of side tower. Again, we're going to be alternating that left and that right bumper, or rather trigger, just to be using our left and right hands to continue climbing up. I'm not going too fast, but not too slow either. You'll end up kind of on this plank. Hold X to place your anchor. Then you can release yourself. Use the left bumper just to get a little bit of uh, distance in your swing here before swinging across and jumping. You might need to use two jumps there. Not a problem if you need to swing a couple more times to time that pro perfectly. Then you can look up and press X to throw your line. And then what we want to do here is we basically want to jump, use our momentum to swing across, and we're trying to get up onto that uh, ledge right there. It can be a little bit tricky to like get the game to do exactly what you want, but once you get there, make sure you do hold the left and the right trigger so you actually grab onto the ledge. And then you want to shimmy across to the left-hand side. You will reach this part where you will need to hold that jump button to jump across, in order to actually make these little gaps. Make another jump in order to grab these uh, new ledges above you, shimmying left and right again. Now, personally, I would recommend right here to hold X to place an anchor as a just in case. You can actually let go now, and then you can actually just run across. It's uh, I found this to be much easier than trying to uh, make that jump across this gap, which I found not to be the most reliable method to get across. Pull yourself up and then make sure you bring your rope with you. Inside of here, you might find a ladder, but before going up it, make sure you grab this collectible note nearby. Also, feel free to explore, look around, and enjoy the world if you do want to experience uh, all the little details shown in buildings like this that I'm kind of skipping over for the time being. 
to end chapter one, pretty much, you're going to walk up to this huge horn and interact with it to start a little bit of a cutscene, which I will let you enjoy in this video. This little horn ends up waking up the little buddy that you might have gotten a sneak peek at in the opening cutscene. And he's going to be in our backpack for the rest of the game. He's actually pretty useful at finding you collectibles, showing you the way to go if you do get lost. And he's going to basically be helping us a bunch throughout the rest of the game. This buddy and this horn also seem to uh, be able to interact with the world in a way we weren't able to interact with before. So that's going to be another new mechanic. And if you want, something you can do is you can press left on the D-pad in order to hug this guy. This little guy's name is Ballast, I believe. And there's actually an achievement for hugging them once. And there's an achievement for hugging them 20 times. So you press left on the D-pad in order to do the hug, and you have to wait for the little animation to play out. If you do this 20 times, you will unlock the achievement named Restored Connection, which I already have, and I won't bore you with the details on showing you all 20 of the hugs. But if you want to get that out of the way, I would recommend doing that now. There's not really many opportunities you would do this throughout the game, so it's kind of good to just get it out of the way. All right, so let's do chapter two now by walking forward. And some of the new types of items we're going to climb are kind of like these plants. It's almost like they're alive or part of the world. And this is actually alive if you paid attention to the cutscene because of our new friend, Ballast. So climb up to the top of the tower here, uh, wind in your rope, and then you can use the zip line to get down. And this will allow us to kind of continue on a little bit further. Lots of collectibles to go, lots of game progress to go, so just stay tuned. Once you reach the bottom here, you can go up to these plants, and you can press right on the D-pad to see where our next objectives are. You can also see some collectible types using this, and you can also make plants grow using up on the D-pad. Now, what I would recommend is grabbing onto the plant before you make it grow. This will allow you to hitch a ride to it in certain instances, but not always. In this case, it allowed us to hitch a ride, but you can just climb it from the bottom if you didn't. And then make sure you jump to the ladder to get to the top here. Reeling in your rope with you once you're at the top here. And then you can continue up a little bit further. Climbing this blue rope nice and quick, alternating the left and right trigger. Um, and you can get up very, very, very quickly and, uh, and whatnot. A little double jump here in order to grab up the ledge above you. And then once you reach this kind of end point where you can no longer move, it is worth holding X to make a piton. You might want to rest by holding in the left stick and press up on the D-pad to make the plant grow. You can now use a wall run to wall run left and then right in order to grab onto the newly made plant. And then once you do that, climb up onto the ledge in front of you, reeling in your rope behind you. And make sure to grab this missable collectible by walking forward and to the left into this kind of cave. This, I believe, is called a fresco. You interact with it by pressing up on the D-pad. 
it will glow blue. You'll get a little bit of a saving symbol in the right hand corner to let you know you grabbed it and it'll show up in your gallery uh, once you do get it. So once you do have that, we can now move on back to the main path here. So backtrack just a little bit and then we're going to be climbing up this ledge right here. This one might involve a little bit of uh, jumping and quick grabbing, but we're just making our way up and to the left here. Again, alternating that left and right trigger, jumping when we can't reach the next uh, little area. And then here, we'll want to rest. And then maybe you can do a double jump to get to the top. Reel in your rope behind you. And then you can walk forward and to the right. And here you can find your next cairn. From there, we're going to be using our plant growing buddy in order to scale up this wall. You can go up to this bulb right here. Press up on the D-pad in order for it to gain all these kind of petals that uh, are you know attached to the wall. And you can use these similar to rocks to scale across from the left to the right in order to get onto these kind of boats that are hanging on the wall. You do want to get across from this left boat all the way to the right. Um, you might want to be able to, you might have to jump once or twice, uh, depending on kind of how you're making your way up. And then if you can get, if you can get to the top of this next boat, move a little bit to the right and then press up on the D-pad again, you will be able to make some more petals grow on the next plant. And then you can jump. Feel free to create a piston or a piton rather or an anchor in order to have a backup in case you miss. And you can rest and then we can continue on to the left here. You might need to do a little bit of a jump in order to get to these next kind of hanging uh, wooden frames. Go down a little bit and then jump across to the left. Struggling a little bit here. Uh, we are going to get our stamina back. Let's try jumping from the top here. And then we can... There we go. And from the top here, just climb all the way up. Do a little bit of a double jump if you need it to get to the top. And reel in your rope. Before moving on with the level, we do want to go up this double jump ledge right here. So double jump up this ledge. And then you can drop down. And there is a shell in this room which is a collectible type we do already have, but this is our next one. Similar to the last one, we will have to wait like close to 30 seconds for it to, you know, complete the little shell cinematic. All right, once we're done that, let's back out. Head back towards where we came from. Drop down and go to the... This is where we came from, from up there. And then, you know, we came up here. Go here and you'll notice that there is the plant up top. If we press up on the D-pad, that plant will grow. And it'll bring us down to here which we can now use to get up to where we couldn't reach before, which is over here and to the right. Make sure to use that double jump if you need it. And then use your plant growing skills again. Here you just want to double jump and then grab the tree. Make sure you're resting up when you need to. You can also move uh, to the left hand side ledge there. But once the branch splits, you want to make sure you go up and to the left. There's a very tricky collectible once you're up here. So once you're up here, wind your rope back up. Go to the end of this ledge and you can hold B to anchor yourself here. Or X rather, sorry. And now what we're going to be doing is we're trying to get... It's very hard to see. But over there, kind of in the middle of the screen, just over my character's shoulder, there is a cairn, which is that rock formation. And we're trying to get that. So we're going to start by kind of loosening ourselves here. And we're going to be 
wall running from right to the left and trying to anchor somewhere there as far to the left as possible. And we're going to try that again, running right to left. And we're trying basically to get to that ledge right there. So now that we have a little bit of room here, we can hopefully swing back and forth to get to that ledge with the cairn there. And once we're up here, it I kind of got a little lucky with the way I hit the ledge. But if done correctly, you can interact with that collectible. You can jump back down to where you came from. You do... Uh, it's probably just faster to unhook yourself and then restart this little climb. This time at the top of the climb, you want to take the right-hand side path instead of the left-hand side path. Feel free to use your double jumps when possible up here. And then... Up and to the right. Feel free to rest your stamina when you need it. And then you can transfer over to these wooden planks to get around the corner. Place your anchor. And then you'll be able to wall run left and right. Once you do wall run a little bit, you want to press up on the D-pad in order to grow the plant. You have to make sure you get close enough. I wasn't close enough that time. So it just needs a little bit of... Um, a little bit of stamina here and there. It's not like the easiest to do, but if done correctly, it should do that. Which will just allow you to grab onto these and use them. That should allow you to then double jump to these next little wall uh, rock things. Make sure you grab once you're up there. Up on the D-pad in order to grow more plant. Up on the d-pad to grow more plant if you want to reach to the right or you can just double jump up onto the ledge in front of you and reel your rope back in you may notice a collectible kind of directly in front of you once you're up here and to the right i would highly recommend that you grab it right now there is another note while you're down here it's just off to the left next to this kind of domed building with the yellow door so we're going to make sure we grab this as well and then there's a third note, so let's kind of go back across that little bridge off to the right-hand side. You'll notice this kind of elevator system. If you go onto it and interact with it, it'll bring you up a floor. There's a few of these elevators in this section you might need to interact with. Step off the elevator, and then you may notice if you look kind of up and at the wall next to you, there is a flower here that you can hit with your companion by pressing up on the D-pad. And before you do anything with that, Move to your left, go up the stairs to find another uh, letter slash scroll. Very dense in collectibles here, so we're going to go down the steps. Continue kind of in that same direction we were headed. You'll see a red door. Uh, at that red door, let's take a left-hand turn to end up kind of on the cliff's edge. And there you'll find a bulletin board with another note on it, so make sure you grab that as well. And much less obvious, across from this bulletin board, inside of this kind of water, uh, I don't know, a planter slash water feeder, yet another scroll slash letter. Make sure you pick that up as well. The next collectible is an altar. I believe it's our first one of the game. So we're going to kind of go back to where we came from. And then at the end here, turn left. You'll notice that at the end of the hall, there's a cave with some warm light coming out of it. Go inside of there. And here is our altar directly in front of us. You can go up to it. Use the left and right trigger to spin it. If you spin it, it should get a... Uh, it should do this. Light up the room. And you'll also unlock an achievement called Turn the Altar, which I already have unlocked. But let me just tell you exactly what it's called. It's called Back in Motion. Even more collectibles to grab in this area before we really move on. Let's exit out of this tunnel directly in front of you. There should be a ladder. So let's use that ladder to get ourselves up to the top of it. Once at the top of it, you may shimmy across the ledge using the left stick. Just shimmy to the right. This is automatic and contextual based on where you are. And then up on here, you'll notice that there is a desk with a couple of birds and yet another note. Uh, very dense in collectibles here. And before moving on, don't forget up these small stairs next to this ladder. You can also find a cairn 
So I believe this is our fourth one of the game. Make sure you use it. What we can then do is go back, go down the steps, and ride this ladder. It will bring you up a little bit further. From here, if you step out onto the ledge, you can look up and anchor yourself using X. I actually got stuck here a little bit uh, the first time I played the game. And then you can jump across, basically, and grab the plant that we were able to spawn earlier as we kind of entered the area. Might require you to do a little bit of jumping here to get to the final ledge. But just work your way up and forward. Hold B to unwind and then go forward in front of you through the kind of caves here. And then if you go to the left hand side of this cave, you'll find a thin tunnel that you can shimmy through. So make sure you do that. Once you do shimmy through, you want to create an anchor here on the wall, and then you can drop down, holding the left bumper to get to the bottom of the area. Once in the bottom of the area, unhook yourself, and you should be able to find your second fresco or fresca by pressing up on the D-pad. I guess a fresca is a sodi pop, and a fresco is something completely different, but... We can now leave the area. There's only one way to leave the area through this tunnel. It'll kind of loop you back around and you can press up on the D-pad in order to uh, take this new uh, plant up and towards another plant. And our goal is basically we're just trying to get to like kind of where we came from. There's a little bit of traversal here, but it should loop you back. At this little fork in the road, you do want to go up and to the right. Watch out for your stamina if you need to. Feel free to create an anchor if you need one. And then jump to the right and pull yourself up on the ledge. And untie your rope in order to move forward. Here, climb up this uh, ladder pretty much right in front of you. There's a plant up and to your right, so press up on the D-pad in order to make its petals form on the wall. Uh, it's a little bit hard to grab sometimes here, but once you're on, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Follow those petals towards the kind of ladder pegs. And then that should bring you to a couple more ladders, and you'll get up to this top area here. Let me hold the left trigger, the left uh, stick here, just to make sure that uh, I can get up. And then once I'm up here, you want to hold B to bring up your rope. There is a little shortcut to go back down and bring yourself up if you need to. But probably more importantly, there is a shell that you will want to grab. This is our next little shell collectible. Our next little 30 second unskippable cutscene. And uh, that will allow us to then move forward a little bit. We're getting close to the end of Chapter 2, or however you want to call it. With this game, uh, the chapters are roughly 30 minutes each. Uh, maybe 20 minutes each, kind of depending on the chapter. So that's kind of the pacing of the game. Once that's done, you can hold B to back out. You should be able to then press X in order to pull down this bridge directly in front of you. Go across the bridge and stick to the right-hand side. You'll find a short uh, little uh, squeeze hole through this cave. You'll want to squeeze through there. And as you squeeze through, there should be a collectible on the right side of the room. Now we're going to do a little bit of backtracking, squeeze back through that tunnel that we came into the room with. As you squeeze out onto the ledge, you'll notice that there is a point that we can latch onto using our rope. Kind of in front of us, but much above us. So throw that rope out. You should be able to just kind of jump into the chasm now. If you turn back a little bit, you'll notice that there is a uh, cave. Kind of not in the same kind of direction as where we jumped from. So just make sure you're at the right height. 
get yourself a swing or two here and make sure you go into this cave. Bring your rope with you and then continue forward. Drop down one, two, three, four sets of little ledges. As you enter this new area, look to your left and press up on the D-pad. For some reason, I didn't grab it there on my first one, so I did have to press it twice. Make sure it does glow blue. You can, you can always load up your gallery to make sure it counted. Now, you might assume that we're actually going in the right direction of the game, but this whole little, like, temple area is pretty optional, and we actually have to head back towards where we came from. Head up the ledges that we dropped down at the beginning, and we're actually trying to get up the kind of central, central area of that chasm we were in. So once you kind of climb up all of the ledges here and make your way back into that chasm, what I would recommend here is look to the right-hand side and you can press up on the D-pad to make the plant grow, hang on to it on its growth path, or just, you know, uh, rock climb it as it's uh, after it's done growing. And once it's done growing here, it should lead you to a little bit of a new ledge that was previously not accessible. I'm going to create a little bit of a anchor here. This should just make it a lot easier to run left and then run right. I find that this is a way more useful strategy to get to ledges like this, as just jumping and hoping for the best often uh, doesn't result in a great outcome. Climb up the ledge. You should be able to throw your rope up and far above you. This should allow you to then jump across. You will have to pull yourself up on the rope a little bit, but your goal here is to grab onto the wooden structure kind of in front of you. And uh, if you do miss like I just did there, it's really not that much of a penalty. But grab on when you do get close. And then you might need to do a little bit of a jump here. And just keep climbing and mantling your way up to the right. Jump when the gap is too big. Jump again if the, ju if the gap was too big. And then once you get up top here, unwind your rope, collectible directly in front of you in one of these feeders, another letter, one more collectible for this chapter. If we then turn to our left, go through here, and we look across the chasm, we'll notice that there is a anchor point we can use. We can jump across, and then once we land over here, on the other side of those ledges, there is a cairn we can interact with, so make sure that you do. After that, we can head back through this little door here, and then you want to climb up this ladder, or these kind of pegs or whatever. This should trigger you into the next cutscene, which basically ends off chapter 2. And after this, we do begin chapter three. So I'll let you enjoy a little bit of the cutscene here. Chapter 3 is called Solstice, and it's probably the longest chapter in the game by far. Now to start off the chapter, I actually want to show you something you might want to keep in mind as you're playing, and that's two cumulative achievements. One of them is called Acrobat for jumping 200 times, and one of them is called Fresh Air for restoring your stamina more than 50 times while climbing. It's up to you how you tackle these two. You can go sit on a wall and boost them for the next 10 minutes, or you can just get them naturally as you play. It's unlikely that you finish these off by the time we're done. So keep in mind, you might wanna to work towards these as you're playing, or we can mop them up after using chapter select. Now, as soon as you do start chapter three, you actually want to turn around and find one of the trickier collectibles in the game, in my opinion, just because you really don't expect it to be here. There is a Bianca letter that is available uh, right behind you at the start of chapter three. From here, we can then move on and go the actual direction we were facing when we started. And here you do want to keep to the left and you'll find a little bit of a 
um, tunnel that you can climb up the hill. And at the end of this tunnel, you'll be able to find a cairn collectible. Make sure you interact with that before moving on. You can then run back the way we came from, head down the tunnel, and proceed. There's a couple of new mechanics in Chapter 3 we will be, uh, you know, using. But for now, we can go down the zip line. In terms of the new mechanics, there are some mechanics that have to do with the bright sunlight. And a couple of mechanics with moving little animals we'll need to interact with. So, I'll kind of explain those as we get there. Drop down and then follow the path for a little bit here. Climbing up this as we get here. Get to the top one and you have to double jump. It's a little bit of a big jump, but you should be able to get it. And then you want to shimmy over to the right hand side. Keep climbing to the right. Feel free to make a piton just in case you need it as there might be a couple of jumps required here. And don't forget to rest your stamina if you need to. It also helps build towards that achievement we were talking about earlier. I'm going to create another piton just because I'm going to be jumping. It can be a little bit finicky with the controls. If you do fall, it's not a big deal as uh, you'll just be able to try again, basically. But once you make your way across, bring your rope with you. Now here is a little bit of a new mechanic. You can press up in order to get this flower to bloom, but the petals that are in the sun will basically melt away very, very quickly. So you kind of have to move a little bit quickly after you get the petals to generate. It'll say the roots will wilt in the sun and disappear after a certain amount of time. And you'll see that happen behind me here. Uh, but if you do not make it, you just gonna have to go back, uh, regenerate the roots and then try again. You do want to climb up and a little bit to the uh, right here and just keep climbing. Uh, you may have to do a little bit of a double jump here, so feel free to use a anchor just in case you need it and then continue climbing up. Might need another double jump here. Just a single jump work too. Watch out for that stamina bar. Apparently my one terabyte SSD is now ready, so that's great news. Um, and then we can just get all the way to the top, shimmy across to the right, and then jump yourself up, winding your rope. Instead of going up this blue rope, we actually want to make it across this large gap to the right-hand side. And that's because there's a collectible over there on that side. So it can be a little bit tricky to figure out how to get there. But we actually, we're going to go up the blue rope for now real quick. As it's better to do it from above than it is from the side here. So now as you're climbing up here, we're going to quickly grab a couple of collectibles before we move on. So at the top of this ladder, what you want to do is pull yourself up, wind up your rope and look to the left, hop up onto the ledge. And then there's two collectibles here. We can run forward and towards this door, making sure to pick up this letter here. And there's another letter here where we can look towards the lantern in the back of the room and pick this up right here. With both of those letters, let's go back to the ledge that we came from. And uh, we actually want to go kind of up and to the right here, but there's also a collectible cairn down there. What we want to do is drop down. While we're doing this, we're also going to go for the Angel's Carabiner. Um, achievement and I'll show you how to do that but it's for basically placing a piton at the top of a wall run we're gonna be wall running a lot here so it's not a bad place to do it anchor yourself to the wall press up on the d-pad to get some of the um, pedals to spawn and move across them quickly as they will be disappearing and then anchor yourself to the wall before they disappear now in order to get angels carabiner drop your rope a little bit don't make it too long but don't make it too short and then we're going to wall run to the left, and at the top of the wall run to the right, we're going to place another anchor. If done correctly, the achievement will unlock. If I take a couple of runs here, just run a little bit back and forth, and then let's try to place an anchor. As we're falling, we're going to be holding X. And if done correctly, it should unlock, but it is a little bit finicky. And there it goes. Again, you might have to experiment a little bit with some of the rope length. 
as well as uh, you know the timing of it. But once you get that to unlock, it might take you five, ten tries. It took me a couple uh, the first time I did it as well. But once you have that ready, you can then wall run even further to the right as we are trying to get all the way to the end of this ledge here. And then you can bring your rope back down. And the reason we came down here is for this collectible cairn. So we're going to grab that. After placing the cairn, you want to press up on the D-pad in order to generate the plants. And we're going to use these plants to get where we're going. Start by climbing up the kind of largest root right up the middle. And if you press up on the D-pad, it should spawn a couple more petals from the plant above. We can then continue climbing. We might need to do a little bit of an awkward jump here. And we can continue climbing upwards to the next plant, which will be in the sun. So make sure you place an anchor if you find yourself about to fall. Just try to be quick on these and place your anchor if you need to. Your goal is to get to the rocks kind of near the top right before you make yourself to the relay. For the relay, just press the left and right trigger to attach yourself by jumping towards it. And then you can press X to wind in your rope. And you basically are starting a new rope and not having to worry about uh, ha you know running out of rope here. Now that we have a new rope at the relay, what we can do is kind of let ourselves go. Let your rope down a little bit and then just swing towards the blue rope. Uh, to the right hand side and then you can pull yourself up and continue forward a little bit here my one terabyte storage is ready yet again thank you xbox climb up the blue rope again a little bit further keep climbing keep climbing and eventually you'll make your way to the top feel free to rest with your stamina if you want to work towards that achievement i mentioned earlier pull your rope up and let's continue all right, from here, you want to look to your right-hand side. You'll be able to throw your rope at a uh, little anchor point, and you want to basically drop down and lower yourself to kind of the lowest part of the map that you can. Unanchor yourself, and you just want to keep going kind of downward. So if you can't figure out where to go, just keep going lower and lower. Here, you'll want to go even lower. And then you want to go even lower any second here it'll let me undo my rope guess not anyways once you drop down all the way to the bottom here you do want to go up to the sign and press y it says close permanently or until the sun decides to start moving again that is a collectible that we needed even though it didn't really seem like the same type of letters we've been getting so far and then you can actually start just climbing kind of right back up to where we came from as quickly as you can. Once you get to this kind of midway point, you can go to the left and hitch a ride on this plant. If you grab it as it's growing, you'll save yourself a lot of time, but you don't have to. But once you do get up to the top ledge here, you'll notice that's where we came from, up there to the left. That's the little anchor point, and you want to drop down into this ledge, which will let you kind of climb right up into a cavern. Once inside this cavern, we're actually going to go to the left-hand side. There's a little break in one of these kind of windows. And once you're here, you can actually look up and to your left to throw your rope and lower yourself down kind of into this kind of dungeon-looking area. And once you're in this kind of dungeon-looking area, just drop down into the middle. And at the far end of the room, you'll find your ne next collectible by pressing up on the D-pad. Make sure it glows blue. Make sure you get the little saving icon. You can even double check your gallery. With these, you have to be pretty close for them to register. So you want to keep that in mind. Then you can kind of turn around. And we're just going to head back to where we came from. You should be able to just throw your rope. And pull yourself right back up. And now, once you're back in this cavern, you're going to want to go upwards. Pull yourself up. Up the next ladder. Pull yourself up. Or don't. There we go. Uh, there we go. And pull yourself up. Keep going up. Wind your rope up with you. And up the next ladder we go. 
And once you're here, there's actually a pretty well hidden shell. So you want to walk forward. And then basically it's kind of underneath us uh, down here. So you're going to want to make an anchor point on the wall here. And then you can just walk off, drop yourself down, and then swing into here. Drop yourself off of the rope. And the shell is inside next to this kind of water fountain. And as with all the shells, there will be a small cinematic once you pick it up. All right, quit out of that once you can. And we're gonna start heading more closer towards our actual main objective as this area is kind of a side area. If you come back out here to the ledge and you look, there are some handles as well as a plant. So climb up the handles as much as you can. Press up on the D-pad to get that plant to grow a little bit. And then you should be able to just kind of double jump to it and grab onto it in order to get back to where we came from maybe another double jump here and then wind your rope back up and go back into the cave sticking to the left and you'll notice that there are some walls here we're going to be climbing we're going to basically be going across the area here so start by working your way from right to left from left to right across this wall and once there's a little bit of a break in the wall you may notice that there is a new mechanic here and these are these little bugs and these bugs will move as we're holding them there's actually ways to freeze them but I'm not going to talk about that quite yet you want to basically just use these bugs in order to get yourself to the next set of uh, grippable rocks on the wall and then that should be able to get you further towards that objective which is the next area I am going to create an anchor here just in case. And I'm actually going to swing as I find it easier sometimes to swing than it is to uh, try to find the exact uh, little ledge they want you to grab here. Make another anchor here just in case. And then we can drop down a little bit and work our way towards this area. Feel free to rest up that stamina if you want to work towards your 50 stamina rests. And then onto the ledge. And then inside. Press up on the D-pad. You can make this plant grow. And wind your rope back in. Alright, so the vine to our right actually just lets us kind of take a shortcut back to where we came from. But we're moving in the right direction. There's now four quick collectibles in quick succession. So keep up here. Just in front of me and to the left, we can find a letter. And then what we're going to do is move through this kind of cave here. Let me just make sure my, uh, there we go. I'm just checking that my recording software is still going here. As we enter into this room, we want to run forward and then up the staircase. That kind of curves a little bit. Directly in front of us, in the planter, we'll find another note. Across from this note on the wall... Next to the kind of door entrance is another collectible note. And then you want to go inside of this kind of cave entrance, follow along, and then down and to the left, you can find another letter. If you do want to do a quick achievement check or rather collectible check, we have four in our gallery. And if we go to letters, we should have this first kind of... Um, the first three rows plus one, and then in Bianca we have five. We can then get our next cairn by going back where we came from. As we exit, you'll notice the planter, and there's a cairn collectible basically directly under it. So you want to be able to make your way down. 
using these ledges here. It's going to be the easiest way to get down. There are some ladders and stuff which you can use if you want. But this was the best way I found personally. And once you get all the way down, you can find your cairn collectible. Make sure you grab it before you move on. And we're kind of going towards that windmill as our main objective. So let's go up these two ledges towards the growing plants. Grab onto them and then make them grow in order to just get back to where we came from. Just a little bit of an easier way to do it. If you do a double jump here, you should be able to make it up no problem. There we go. And now we can bring our rope back up. Now that we grabbed the one note from earlier, the three notes in this area, and the one cairn down there, we can now make our way towards this windmill. All right, so our goal here is actually to get basically kind of above where we are right now, but we have to go a very long and treacherous path. One of the kind of harder climbing sections in the game, if I'm honest, but you want to start by heading up the ladder and then shimmying to the right across the little gap. You will have to take a couple of breaks here and there when your stamina is low. If I am going too fast for you, just slow the video down and do it at your own pace. But you're just trying to get up here for now. You might need a little a bit of a double jump there. And feel free to rest your stamina when you need to. Hop up on these next two ledges, and you'll notice that there is an anchor point you can shoot to. And then you can just drop down. Let your rope go really long. And then you want to end up going towards this ledge on the wall with the plant. Again, you need a pretty long rope here. When you're close, press up on the D-pad if you want to see where the kind of pedals will be. But because it is in the sun, they will disintegrate very, very quickly. So it's kind of better just to land right here on this ledge. Next up, you'll notice that there's these little critters that move across the wall. And if you press up on the D-pad, it will freeze them in place. We're going to be riding these from the right to the left. And there's also a collect, uh, an achievement called Collective Climb, where if you freeze enough of them at once, the achievement should unlock here. So I believe you have to freeze 25 at the same time. Um, so you just kind of need a couple of them to spawn in, and we'll grab a bunch of them and then hitch a ride on over. Here come a few more, so let's jump on and grab a ride. It will create an anchor point for us automatically. And again, you can press up on the D-pad to freeze them if you need to. If you can count 25 and you think you can hit all of them with um, the up on the D-pad move, then now is a good time to do it. I think I have about 25 here. So let's see if it unlocks. Collective climb achievement is what we're hoping for. And it did, so that means it worked. Now what you're trying to do here is you're trying to hitch a ride on one of the bugs that's going up and not the ones that are kind of coming down. And once we're going up here, you should be able to reach the next plant pretty soon. And if you're able to do that, then press up on the D-pad to generate the little pedals and continue to climb up. Feel free to take a couple of rests when you need them for your stamina bar. And we're going to continue moving across to the uh, right, or to the left rather. Having uh, problems with my rights and my lefts is not great as someone who makes guides for a living. Um, but it is an unfortunate part of my life. Uh, jump across to the left here and then grab on. Watching out for your little stamina bar. And if you make your way all the way across here, you'll have just barely enough rope to uh, use this relay. And then you want to attach to it. And then you want to reel in the rope from before. And now that we are attached to it, we can let go. Let your rope dangle a little bit. And what we're trying to do is swing towards the windmill. And if done correctly, you should be able to hang on. Keep your rope going and then shimmy across the windmill to the right. You will need to drop down a little bit underneath the central part of the windmill. Go up. And then across to the far end of this windmill. Here you want to make a piton. And then you can uh, dangle down. Uh, 
release your rope a little bit to make it longer so that you can swing across this gap and land on this wooden contraption on the side of the cliff here to pull yourself up and then you can bring your rope in you'll notice an anchor point above your head which you can throw to and you're just going to want to swing forward and to the left in order to end up where we're supposed to end up you can extend this arm right here which will just allow you to shortcut back to where we came from if you do want to pick up some collectibles that you might have missed and then here we will walk forward and then you want to go to the left towards this tree and next to this tree you can find a collectible letter so we'll grab this collectible letter you can then go back towards this wall feel free to press up to grow this plant but we have to come back to it you want to end up underneath the roof and then go more in towards this kind of cavern slash temple near the top of the stairs turn to the left and then turn to the left again here you can throw your rope to the top of the ceiling and you can rappel into this large hole to find the next altar there's not many altars but they are definitely a necessary collectible once you're at the altar head up to it in order to spin it with the left and right trigger making sure all of the rings kind of lock into place automatically the light will turn on in the cavern and you have now successfully turned the altar you can't actually use the anchor point above your head to go back to where you came from so we're gonna have to go the long way by exiting out the door grabbing the plant first recommend it always and then let it grow this should basically just loop us back towards that tree that we were at like literally a minute ago so if you didn't grab the letter on your first time through here you should be able to grab it now and then you can go up this plant to the left hand side this is also one of the first times in the game where I noticed the very nice relaxing music once you climb up here though bring your rope with you instead of going up the elevator you want to go to the left here and we're basically going to be jumping across these gaps make a little anchor point on the wall as a just in case and you want to just jump jump and it didn't work that's okay just want to jump across and make sure you get to this next ledge and then if you're if you have made it across you want to go up here to the cairn collectible which is pretty easily missed this one is one i missed on my first initial playthrough and then what you can do is basically just start heading back you know towards that elevator i mentioned unhook yourself from the wall here head towards the elevator and then ride it up okay so once you get off of the elevator this next section can be a little bit daunting we're gonna have to make our way up this gigantic wall there's a couple of relays on the way there's one on the right we're gonna go for kind of first and then there's a couple on the left that we're gonna use to get all the way up keep in mind there are bugs on the wall and you want to be able to press up on the d-pad to freeze them if you think you need to and our first goal is to make our way to the relay on the right hand side there's also a little flower there that is pretty helpful in getting us where we need to go and make sure you rest up every now and again especially if you're double jumping it can be very easy to pretty much lose all your stamina here these bugs are really taking their time but we should be okay let's make our way over to these uh more still uh moving these more still ones here on the side just under the relay on the right once you're here feel free to press up on the d-pad in order to get a couple more uh, points that you can uh, climb here on the far right this should lead you to a couple more bugs you might need a small little jump there which should lead you to the first relay feel free to make anchor points when you need them uh, it, they can really save you on this section if you are struggling and make sure you get yourself to that relay point wind your rope back up and then you want to move uh, a little bit uh, even up from here 
We're trying to move up and to the right, just above this relay. There is a collectible we need to grab. It's a shell on the way up here. You will need to transfer bugs every now and again, or else uh, they, they will eventually stop and get tired and, and no longer want to move with you. A well-timed little double jump can be helpful uh, in case you think you might not make it. There we go. And then once you're up here, make your way up onto the ledge, and you should be able to find a shell here. As with our shells prior, we will have to listen to this one for, you know, 20-30 seconds before we can back out. This is a pretty tricky collectible because you'll probably want to just make progress on this wall, and your natural instinct will be to move up and to the left. This is one of the longer, like, single section climb sections of the game as well. In terms of just, like, straight shot going up, this is one of the bigger ones. All right, so after the shell, we basically want to make a straight shot from right to left, right across this large cliff face. And there is a relay kind of low in case we start falling and stuff. We can aim for that one. But there is one a little bit higher here, basically on the same level that we're at. And that's the one we're going to go for. So make a little point there on the uh, wall as you're exiting. Hitch a quick ride on one of these little rock bugs. If you still haven't uh, frozen 25 rock bugs at the same time, uh, which was an achievement we did earlier, now is probably a pretty good time to do that. And just navigate from right to left here. Be careful, there's a couple of spots you can kind of get stuck. Here, you can make a little anchor point just in case we're gonna be jumping up into the right. And it's kind of easy to miss this jump, or sorry, up into the left. And then we have made our way over to our next little uh, relay point. So let's attach ourselves to that. And we can kind of continue climbing up. We'll reach this uh, crack in the rock. Might require us to do a couple of extra jumps. And this kind of means that you're getting, you know, closer to the top of what where we need to be. Feel free to rest on these rocks to work towards that achievement we mentioned earlier for 50 rests. Spawn yourself a couple more pads on the wall to navigate up. Luckily, no um, sun here, so you won't have to worry about them disappearing if you need a little extra time. Hook yourself up to the next relay so you don't run out of rope. And then continue climbing up to the next plant. This one, uh, unfortunately, will wilt in the sun. So let's try to be quick through it, up and to the right to the next set of rocks. And then just keep alternating that left and right trigger to make your way up. You can always make an anchor point here just in case we're like most of the way up and there are a couple of sections where you might miss your handle. And now that you've finally made it up all the way here, we are done. One of the longer climbing sections of the game, snatch your rope back up. Directly in front of you, up the stairs and to your left, you can find a note. It's a Bianca note. Uh, you should get the save there and then drop back down. Go to the right and up the stairs. You'll notice the lovely yellow birds. The music should be playing. You can use your anchor point here to swing across this large gap. And once you land, bring your rope with you. Directly in front of you, there is a platform with like a little bit of some kind of weather dish, maybe. And if you go up to this platform, there is a letter on the ground, which we will want to grab. From this collectible, we can basically just turn uh, towards the rope that kind of goes across. And then if you look downward from here, you should be able to drop a couple of floors. Uh, watch out, there's a, technically a ladder here we can use. And we can quickly grab a cairn, so make sure you grab the cairn after that letter. 
Then you can climb the ladder back up. Climb the little ledges and move to the right. As you're moving to the right, you'll notice a kind of minecart rail. And if you follow that minecart rail, eventually going forward and past it, dropping down in this hut on the right hand side, you can find another letter here. So we'll grab that. We'll do a quick collectible check in a second here. And then we're going to head back towards the platform we were kind of on before, following the minecart back. And that minecart will eventually lead us to a bit of a bridge. And that bridge is unfortunately broken. We'll need to swing across it in order to make more progress. As you approach the bridge, there's a little bit of a checkpoint. You can hook yourself up and then drop down. Let your rope go kind of long here as we will need to swing back and forth. And your goal here is to attach yourself to this uh, wooden uh, minecart rail that is destroyed on the other side. Might need a little bit of an extra jump. Feel free to get your stamina back. And then once you've climbed up, you've made it across and are good to unwind your rope. Once up, you want to move forward. And what we want to do is we want to be able to drop down and to our left. Here there is a little bit of a crack in the wall. You should be able to attach yourself to the wall somewhere around here. And then just drop down and lower yourself all the way down. Once you lower yourself all the way down, let the rope break. Go into this kind of temple room where you can find your next collectible, pressing up on the D-pad for it to glow blue. Let's do a quick uh, a quick check of our letters. Or for our gallery, we do have five in our gallery. And then for our letters, we are only missing, uh, you know, these last few rows here. So you should have everything up to this row of suns, four-way, four letters done. Sorry. And then for Bianca, we have the first complete row. Now, we needed to grab that collectible, but we also needed to go where we were before. So there's a little bit of backtracking to go here. We're going to climb basically back up in the direction that we came from. It's going to be a long climb. Uh, well, a decently long climb. So prepare yourself here. You will need a couple double jumps, like right there. And then you're climbing for that crack in the wall. You will need to put an anchor point down, drop down, and swing yourself a little bit into that uh, giant crevasse. And then you should be able to pretty quickly uh, climb up. I have obviously uh, increased the speed at which I climb as we've been playing this game. What we need to do is double jump up and to the left to grab the handle. And then we need to double jump up and to the right to grab the next rock. And then hopefully this should give us enough uh, of a grip to get up all the way here. And then once you're up, reel your rope back in. And let's continue forward using this path. There's a letter just around this corner. At the top of this hill, turn to the left and use the extra little staircase. And you should notice a letter kind of near a lantern and little workbench. Now from here, there are a lot of collectibles nearby to grab. A couple of them very easy, a couple of them very tricky. Let's work our way back down the stairs towards the boat in front of us. To the right, a very easy collectible. And that is this cairn right here. We're then going to work our way towards these kind of wooden pallets. Our goal is actually to end up above ourselves where we are right now. That is not the main path of the game though. So that's why they're a little bit on the trickier end. Pretty easy to miss. Work your way onto the wooden pallets here. Right from left to right. Sorry, I'm going to try to stop getting that wrong. And then start climbing the rocks a little bit. You want to climb up here and basically get to the tallest point you can, uh, which is going to be this one kind of right here. Instead of moving to the right where the relay is, we're going to be moving to the left. Let's make an anchor point, and we're going to be using this as our wall running section. We're going to have to make a couple of these anchors or pitons if you're still following the proper game name. 
And we're trying to get over to that ledge on the left. Um, it can be a little bit tricky just because of the angle of this uh, giant wall that we're kind of on. It doesn't really want to let you get your way over. But it might take you a couple of tries. Uh, I didn't do it on my first try either. So once you're up though, there's a couple things to grab here that we really do want to get. A letter directly in front of us once we land. We can then move forward. And here, continue along the edge of the balcony. You'll notice that there is a shortcut here that we'll be able to use to get back down if we want. But we are going to continue up the stairs. Directly in front of us at the top of the stairs, a lantern and another collectible. From there, turn around and head towards the metal grate there. Drop down and to the left to find a shell. Very close by to the last letter. Because it is a shell, let's give it 20 or 30 seconds before we uh, move on. Couple more collectibles nearby, so... This is a pretty dense section of collectibles, which is kind of good because you get a lot of collectibles out of the way and then there's like a giant section of gameplay right after. You can just focus on climbing and getting your way through. So the shell is about to end and we'll be able to back out of it right about now, hopefully. Any second now. There we go. Once we back out of the shell, let's go grab the next thing. So you'll be in this little pit here to get out of this pit. You will need to walk to the kind of end of the pit where you'll be able to find a ladder. Climb up that ladder. Walk back towards the letter collectible and then go up the stairs to the left. As you're working your way up these steps, you should come into this room here. Turn to the left through the crack in the wall. Turn to the left again and then follow the long hallway. Halfway through the hallway, you can find your next collectible. Press up on the D-pad and make sure it glows blue. A couple more collectibles to go. This next one can be a little bit disorienting, but it shouldn't be too bad. Go back to the hallway we came from. It's going to be a left-hand turn as you approach the dead end here. And then follow along until you get out and go outside here in the door right in front of you. Once you reach this area, you should have a little anchor point that you can extend and then drop down basically direct, directly underneath yourself. This should drop you straight to a cairn collectible. Sorry, I just got a little bit excited there when I started running back and forth. So we're going to grab the cairn. We're basically like two floors above the boat we were on earlier. And what we actually want to do is we want to go back up to where we came from just previously. So throw your rope and then pull yourself up onto the ledge. Wind your rope back up. And go along this edge until it ends. And there is a small section of wall that we can squeeze through here. As you squeeze yourself through this wall, there is a collectible right in front of you as you exit. So make sure you grab that collectible as well. So from this collectible, let's continue walking forward to the ledge right in front of us. If you look up and to the right, we're trying to get to that ladder over there, which then leads us even further up. So there'll be a little point here that you can grab onto and let's start shimmying from left to right. About halfway through, you can always place an anchor just in case, but you'll need to make this little jump on this corner. And then you'll be able to keep working your way across another little jump just in case. Sometimes it's easier to jump than to find the perfect grip. Bring your rope with you onto this next little climbing section. You'll want to climb up until you're basically hanging from the top of a rock downward. 
And then once you're hanging from here, you want to create an anchor point, and then you can basically just swing yourself to the ladder. You will need a little bit of slack in that rope, and then climb the ladder once you're on it. And that section is pretty quick and pretty easy. Bring your rope with you, then head up this curved ramp directly in front of you. Look to the right and you'll see the little hut with the planter in front of it. To the left, you can find a letter. So we'll grab that letter. From here, what we want to do is we want to basically make our way up to the top of this zip line uh, that's directly across from the planter. It can be a little bit complicated and it's a very optional area to be in. But if you just walk forward here, you'll end up near this narrow staircase. This staircase leads to a hallway. That hallway has a ladder. Climb that ladder. There's a second ladder, which we can climb as well. If you climb that, you should end up next to a couple of boats. A lot of boats, considering we're on the top of a mountain here. And then up here, there is a collectible. If we go to the left and look near the uh, door here on the wall, you can find the collectible. And then we can go back to the zip line and zip line our way back down kind of towards where we came from. There's a plant here. You can uh, grow if you want to, but we're not going to need it for now. Instead, you want to go back up this curved ramp kind of towards that hut with the planter. And there is another zip line nearby with a, uh, you know, little uh, kind of pole here. And you want to zip line across. This actually zip lines us back towards where we came from, but a couple of stories higher. And now we have another giant wall to climb. There is a little point here that we can release to get back to where we came from, but we're not going to need that. Instead, press up on the D-pad to spawn the pedals. And let's start our way up and across this giant wall here. We do have to move pretty quick on these as they will kind of melt away from the sunlight. And hopefully at the end you can find some bugs. If you don't, you'll need to make a quick anchor point. And then you should be able to keep making your way up here to the next little set of bugs. And as long as you're working your way up, you are making good progress. There is a relay most of the way up, which is kind of our goal here. I'm going to make a quick anchor point because it seems like this bug doesn't want to move. So maybe I can kind of wall run to where I'm going. And here we can grab our relay. We're going to need it just because we're not going to have enough rope to get all the way up. A couple more bugs and a couple more rocks, but once we start getting to this section up here near the top, it isn't too bad. You might need to do a little jump or two to the left in order to grab the next pieces. And before you know it, you should be all the way at the top, bringing your rope up with you and grabbing the next collectible, which is just up the stairs and then to the right, down the stairs, next to the lantern. And luckily for you, this collectible is right near the end of Chapter 3. So walk towards the giant kind of sundial looking object and interact with the item right in the middle. This will start a little bit of a cutscene, which lasts just a few minutes as some of the other ones in this game. And once we are done this little cutscene, it should shoot us straight into Chapter 4 which is named Convergence.
At this point, we're done a little bit more than half the game. If you think I've earned it, I would appreciate if you dropped a like or shared the video with a friend. But let's start with Chapter 4, Convergence. So we'll start the chapter by running up the stairs directly in front of us. You can use your Echo up on the D-pad in order to spawn a couple petals here just to make your way across this simple wall. Luckily, these will not disappear on us, so that's pretty good news. And then climb up the ledge and bring your rope with you. Walking forward and then up the steps. Look up to throw your rope. Jump into the gap. Pull yourself up just a little bit and swing yourself to the left instead of the right. And there's a little hidden platform here you can land on. And you want to go here because there is a collectible at the bottom of these steps on the right hand side. So make sure you grab this letter. And then we can head back up the stairs and go the proper way which is uh, on that platform on the right. So you do have to lift yourself up a little bit and grab the ledge, bringing the rope with you. I got pretty lucky there and made it real quick. And then continue up the stairs into this next room. Once you enter here, what you want to do is you want to look to your left, throw the rope, and pull yourself up onto the ledge. There's a little bit of a new mechanic here. I'll show you how it works. Jump across this gap to the right and then grab the ledge. Go into the sparks. Once you're in the sparks, hold up on the D-pad to call them to yourself. At this point, if you jump, they will carry you to the next ledge. Just make sure you use your triggers to actually grab the ledge or you will fall. Continue moving to the right, making the jump across the gap and then go to the ladder and pull yourself up this ladder onto the ledge here. And here you can use your left and right trigger to turn the wheel, which will open the door in the bottom center of the room. Once you open the door, attach yourself to the wall and basically you just wanna drop straight down towards that door. And then go through the door into this next area. Graphically, Chapter 4 is very beautiful, especially this room. Walk through the hallway and then go up the ladder on the left-hand side. Once up here, you can basically go around this platform to the right. And you'll find this thin bridge that links you to another section of this area. And in here, we can find a decently well-hidden collectible cairn. All right, so let's backtrack a little bit towards that little bridge. Go back and basically jump into the pit. Go towards this ladder that is basically right in front of us on the other side of the pit. Climb that ladder. This is really the only place you can go to get out of this area. Head to the left and then go up and through the door on your right-hand side. Continue up the steps on your left. I'm trying to go pretty slow here. As you enter this huge, large room... Take a right-hand turn, and directly in front of you, uh, just next to this door at the bottom of these steps, you can find a shell collectible. Definitely our favorite type of collectible, because when I pick up a collectible, what I want to do is I want to put down the controller for 45 seconds and stare at the screen while I want to continue playing a game I'm enjoying. That was what we call a little bit of sarcasm for those in the back paying a little bit less attention. So after our uh, 30 seconds here, we'll back up and there's actually a collectible letter just next to the shell. We'll make sure we grab that. So continue down the hall to the left, ignoring anything else in this hallway for now and grabbing the letter next to the lantern. If you do want to do a quick collectible check, let's do it. In your gallery, you should have the first row. In letters, for the letters tab, you should have um, a octopus, one of those letters. And then for Bianca, you should have one octopus letter as well. Now, if we back up, what we can find is there is a hallway that connects just next to this letter. It's kind of more purple than the hallway we were in. Go down that hallway, continue down it. It should go down a ramp to a staircase to an open room. 
as you go into that open room, look to your right hand side and you should find your next fresco. My character is just randomly stuck on the staircase here. So make sure you grab it, pressing up on the D-pad, make sure it glows bright blue so that you know you actually got it. And then let's backtrack towards where we came from. Let's go through that hallway we were just in. Back towards the letter. As you come around the corner into the larger hallway, turn to the left hand side and you'll be able to find the sparks here on the wall. We're going to call the sparks and then we're going to jump against the wall in order to let them carry us up a little bit. Just keep pressing A and then make sure you grab onto the ledge when you actually can and then pull yourself up. Here you'll be able to throw your rope across this gap to pull down a miniature bridge. And across the bridge, you can find your next collectible. Another collectible that's a part of this kind of larger area. We're going to backtrack across the bridge. Then we can throw our rope above us. And we actually want to lower ourselves down into this large area. Kind of across from where we came down from. You'll notice that there is a small wall here with a couple of sparks. If you press up on the D-pad to call the sparks, they'll lift you up onto this next ledge and you can pull yourself up, walk forward and into the next room to double jump from ledge to ledge and then jump to the ladder and pull yourself up the ladder. Top of this ladder, there will be a letter directly in front of you. Bear with me for the next collectible. It's not that close. We'll drop down back to where we came from. And then you should be able to find a door here that is openable using a wheel. And then you want to go through that door after you open it. Follow this hallway into the next room as it curves to the right. Then what you want to do is you want to throw your rope into the gap. But as you jump into the gap, look to your right and above you to notice some of the light bugs here. And you want to throw yourself at the light bugs and then grab onto the wall when you're nearby. Call the light bugs to yourself using your echo and then jump up the wall to let them carry you up. Snatching your rope with you once you get into this room. Walk forward and go a little bit to the left through the gap into the next hallway. Continue through that hallway into this large room. We're trying to get basically up and above us. To do that, you can walk forward and begin climbing the wall directly in front of you. You will need to make a jump across the gap to the right. Once you do that, you should be able to call the spark bugs next to you in order to get the kind of huge double jump you need up to the next area. And then if you navigate to the left, you should find a ledge here. Make an anchor point just in case you don't make this jump though. Almost ran out of stamina as well. Bring your rope with you and then you can find this small bridge that you can throw a rope to bring down. And in the room in front of me, there are two collectibles. Make sure you grab both of them. As you enter on the table, kind of directly in front of you, you can find a letter from Bianca. And then there's another letter next to this door nearby. This is a regular letter. Make sure you read it before you leave. Some pretty tricky collectibles in chapter four. Let's turn around and go back where we came from. But instead of going back across that bridge, stick to the wall on your right, right as you exit that little room. And then climb that wall and you wanna end up on this kind of ramp to the left. If you do that, you should be able to throw your anchor point into kind of the center of the room here. The, sometimes the game just doesn't like the angle it tries to give you. But you're going to want to swing across to grab the rocks on the other side. Once here, the spark bugs should come out of the um, flower. And if you press up on the D-pad, it should also grow the vine directly above you. Once the vine is done growing, you want to double jump to that new flower. 
the spark bug should help you a little bit. And you actually want to press up on the D-pad to bloom the next flower and move up and to the left instead of to the right where the game wants you to go naturally. Pull yourself up on the ledge here, and in this area you should be able to find yet another letter. Pretty dense in collectibles at the beginning here. Backing up from there, let's just go back to where we came from. Use the little pedals on the wall now to navigate to the right. Then get to the vine we extended earlier. And you want to take the vine all the way to the right, staying on the lower uh, of the forks. A little bit of a weird jump here, but you should be able to jump to this ledge and then pull yourself up. You want to bring your rope with you, it's pretty important, because if you don't, you'll get it stuck on the corner there and not be able to move forward. Pull yourself up the ladder, go onto these thin ledges, and then walk. Go to the right when there's a T intersection here, and then continue to the next area on the wall that we will connect to. Up on the D-pad to spawn some petals for yourself. And we want to be up, not down here, so let's just give it a little jump. And then start climbing to the left. Once you are a little bit closer, you should be able to press up on the D-pad to hit the next flower, which is off to the left. Place an anchor here, just in case we are going to be jumping and hopefully making it nice and easily to the next ledge. There is a little point here where we can go back down, but we are not going to use it for now. Go up to this wood. Here you'll need to do a little bit of a jump to get to the next section. And then another little double jump to get to the next section. And then go up the next staircase in front of you here and into this large room. Once you're here, you want to stay to the left and there's a couple of bugs on the wall that we're going to be using to navigate up. Might need to do a couple jumps, might need to freeze them for a second here and there, but our goal is to move to the left here. I'm going to rest and create an anchor. There's a split in the wall, we have to jump across to the left. It's not always uh, a perfectly easy jump as some of the textures get in the way. And then we're gonna continue climbing with a double jump here. Resting if we need to. I'm going to create another anchor here. It's a good place as a just-in-case. And then we're going to jump to the right towards the relay. Once at the relay, obviously connect to it. Then you can climb up a little bit. Press up on the D-pad to get the spark bugs to you. And then double jump and grab the ledge above you. Here, we'll make our way to some more bugs, which we can use to get up the wall here. The jumps aren't that easy, but once you're pretty high up, feel free to create an anchor, as we are going to be basically jumping to the left here. And it's just easier to use an anchor and just throw yourself at this corner. There is also a bloomable flower, but I don't find that very useful. Pull your rope with you and then walk forward. There's a ledge to your right. You want to double jump up to that ledge, which leads to a small staircase, which leads to a turnable wheel. Turn that wheel to open the door next to it. Walk through the door and on your left, you'll find a collectible letter. From that letter, go back through that door we just came through. Drop down, continue forward directly in front of yourself to find your next wall painting here. Make sure you interact with it and grab it before you move on. And then from here, if you look to the right hand side, there is a giant cavern with a small wooden uh, plank here. You can walk around in order to get next to a zip line, which you want to ride down. Once the zip line touches down, there's an elevator right next to you. Go ahead and ride that elevator.
from the top of the elevator, walk onto the platform and forward in front of you and to the left, there should be a letter on the ground. Oh, sorry, this is a cairn. That's completely my bad. I have notes and, and, and whatnot, but I am going a little bit off memory. Okay, from here, if we go basically across the room to the right-hand side as we entered, you'll go through this kind of uh, double open door corridor directly in front of you, a boat. In that boat, our favorite collectible of all, the shells. The shells were cool the first couple of times we did them. But after a while, I don't know if they quite have the same effect, especially for someone like me who is now playing this game for the third or fourth time. As always, after about 20 or 30 seconds, the screen will blur, and then after that blur, we can back out. And then from this boat, if you turn around and look towards those double doors we came from, there's a ladder to the right-hand side. Or sorry, the left-hand side. I apologize. Go up that ladder to the left-hand side, and you'll find a note on the wall on the left at the top. Pick that up and then drop down back into the center. Go down that corridor with the double doors. Ladder on your right hand side. Got that one right. Uh, and then head up to the top to end up on the platform above. And on the right hand side, there's a door that you can go through, which leads to a hallway that goes up a couple of stairs. And then up a couple more stairs. And then as you enter this bigger, larger room in front of you, Walk forward, and then look to the right-hand side before going further into the room to find another note. Or letter. We're very close to our next collectible. Go a little bit deeper into that giant room in front of you. Staying close to the left-hand side, next to this door, you can find your next letter. Alright, a little bit of climbing to come now. Go up the ladder directly in front of you. We're going to basically be going up and up and up. There is a collectible on the way, though. Once you're at the top of the ladder, press up to spawn the echoes. And then um, the petals. Use the petals to make your way up. You can spawn a couple more petals here. And our goal is to get to the kind of top right. Make an anchor point just in case. And then you can let go. And you want to swing across to the right-hand side ledge. You can do a jump or start another anchor before landing here. Once you're up here, you can basically look towards the center of the room. You'll find a little fan in the middle that you can connect to via your rope. What you want to do is end up on this platform to our left, though, which is a little bit lower than uh, where we want to go for the purpose of the story. So you might want to pull yourself up a little bit. You might need to swing back and forth once or twice. But if done correctly, you should be able to land on here next to the next note you need. From this note, we want to end up going up a little bit further up on the map so we can end up on the bridge where we're kind of hanging from. There's a couple of rocks that you should be able to swing to uh, kind of across. You'll notice that there is also a vine that you can extend here. Can take a little bit, a couple swings back and forth. You might need to get a little bit of speed before you jump to the wall and hang on. There are some spark bugs here, which you can use. So let's use those to double jump our way up and above ourselves and hang on to here. And once you're here, feel free to create an anchor and we're just going to swing to the bridge to our left. Once you're on this bridge, uh, that's kind of where we came from down there. On this bridge on the opposite side, we can find our next collectible, a cairn. Go backwards across that bridge. At the end of the bridge, turn to the left. This is the main path we're supposed to basically be on to be making progress. Up the ladder in front of you. And you'll end up next to a building. 
And just next to it is our next letter. Make sure you grab that off the floor before you move on. Next up, we have a decently longer climbing section. So move forward to the end of this area here. And what we actually want to be able to do here is anchor ourselves to the wall. Press up to bloom the flower. And then we're going to start climbing our way up. You'll transition from flowers to rocks. Once you reach the top of these rocks, you're going to have to start moving to the left towards the spark bugs. Press up so that they are on you. This will also spawn a vine above you. Do that double jump so that they lift you up to the vine. And then go and grab your way up to the relay here. Feel free to rest your stamina. If you do need to rest 50 times while climbing, we're still working on that achievement if you don't already have it. It does have tracking on it as well. Should make it a little bit easier for you. Here we're going to be using our little rock friends to get even further up the wall. So you have to time it a little bit in order to uh, make sure you do it properly. But we're just trying to get further and further up here. I like to create an anchor around here just in case things get a little bit sketchy. We are trying to get to these uh, spark bugs that are kind of on this wall here. And then once we're there, we might need to do a little jump and they should be connected to us. These spark bugs should get us next to the next bugs we need to be on climbing the wall. Again, you can always freeze these guys if you need to. We're pretty close actually to where we need to be, but the bugs get a little bit lazy once you get close to the end here. We're going to be going a little bit to the right at the very end to end up on a platform. Once we're on this platform, bring up the rope with you. And then there is a ledge that we'll have to shimmy across in order to go for our next collectible, but also technically towards the next natural progression of the game. So this one can be a little bit tricky if you weren't paying close attention. Instead of going uh, on it kind of through this next area that's kind of right in front of us, we actually want to drop straight down, which is pretty obvious because of this anchor point. So get yourself connected to that and then basically drop straight down. As, as you drop straight down, disconnect your rope, walk into the room in front of you and interact with the altar, making sure to spin it in order to get it to unlock and trigger. You'll also see a little uh, saving icon, a quick save icon in the top right corner to let you know you got it. And we can now exit out, turn to the left. You'll notice the growing vine. I'm going to recommend you hold on to it first and then let it grow. This should take you most of the way back without having to do much climbing at all. Once you're up here, we can move forward by jumping up these two ledges and walking forward. As soon as you enter this room, look to your left to find a cairn collectible. You want to make sure you grab that before you move on down the hallway. A couple of longer climbing sections coming up, so prepare for that. We're going to go deeper into the hallway across this little bridge here. At the end of this area, you'll see a couple of vines. Make sure you grab on to the most left vine and then you can make it grow. This should take you a decent chunk of the way up without having to worry about um, climbing the vine itself. You'll need a little bit of a jump towards the spark bugs up on the D-pad to get them to make you climb up to the next set of bugs. And we're trying to get to the relay on our um, right hand side here. It's kind of our first little objective. If you do feel like you're going to fall or something's not really working out how you thought it was going to work out, it's not a bad idea to just place an anchor. That way, if I do this jump and I were to miss it, that anchor would have very easily caught me. All right, so now that we're at our first relay point, we can continue climbing up a little bit further here. Uh, there is a vine just above the relay point. 
I ended up uh, letting the vine go before attaching myself to it, which is okay. It's just going to require us to do a little bit of extra climbing that you don't necessarily have to do. If you first grab the vine and then uh, let it expand, uh, you'll save yourself a little bit of climbing here. Up on the D-pad to spawn a couple of pedals above us. Uh, maybe a double jump is required here. Watch out for your um, stamina and let the bu spark bugs carry you to the next relay. Relays are also nice because they let you basically get your stamina back up for free. This is another vine you probably want to grab. F uh, oh, we'll need to do a double jump. I think I just missed that. You'll need to grab the vine and then you call. Uh, press up on the D-pad to do the echo call. And this should take you a decent chunk of the way up the wall uh, without having to necessarily worry about climbing the vine. However, there will be a fork in the vine and you do want to go up the right-hand side because the right-hand side will lead us to a kind of upwards tunnel that is our exit. I'm going to quickly take a little bit of stamina here. We need a little break. I'm going to create an anchor point just because why not if you miss... It's nice to have that little extra bit of insurance. And then I climb my way up. I'm going to bring my rope with me. And I'm at the top if I can squeeze through this hole in the wall. That's how you know you're on the right path. Two collectibles coming up. A fresco and I believe a letter. So right around the corner from us. Uh, once you enter this area, go to the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side, and then follow along. You'll find this somewhat hidden path, and as you enter this larger room, look to your left and make sure you activate this collectible by pressing up on the D-pad. Again, make sure it turns blue and you get the little autosave icon in the top right corner. You can then turn around and we'll go back to where we came from. And then continue basically forward in front of yourself. Once you get to the end here, we'll do a little bit of climbing. The, the rocks here are uh, pretty natural. They'll take you kind of exactly where you need to go. Uh, you do need to go a little bit to the right. Uh, I went a little bit too high, but it's good to have an anchor point as always. And then keep climbing your way to the right here. Once you kind of max out your way here, put an anchor down, let your rope drop down, and then just give yourself a quick uh, swing towards this ladder. Climb the ladder in front of yourself. And then if you go onto the end of this plank, you'll notice an anchor point above you. Make sure you throw your rope. And our goal is to basically launch ourselves into the wall in front of us. We will have to climb the rope a little bit as we're swinging. It might take you one or two swings, but you need a much shorter rope than the one you threw in order to get here. Maybe a double jump or two to get a little bit higher on these rocks. And just keep climbing the natural rock formations. Hopefully you don't get stuck on that swinging part. It's a little bit awkward in terms of getting the perfect rope length. If you shimmy your way over all the way to the right hand side here, you'll grab onto a ledge. You'll be able to pull yourself up, bring your rope with you, grab the collectible note here. And from this collectible note, you can pretty much just walk forward. And we are going to grab the zip line and work our way across this large gap with the kind of jellyfish creatures. As we land, look to your left-hand side in order to find another note. And make sure you grab it. Backing up from the collectible, you can then move on the ledge around the corner, look up to find the rope point. You can then jump and basically swing across towards this ladder. You can grab onto the rocks instead just to pull yourself to the ladder if you don't make the swing. A couple more climbing sections coming up. 
overall, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Jusson. I think it's a well-made game. It's really chill. Lots of collectibles to grab, obviously. But one of the things I'm not a huge fan of is how long you have to wait between achievements. There are sections of this game where I feel like we've probably been playing an hour now and we haven't even gotten a single achievement. The list is very back heavy, AKA. It's all for like grabbing all the collectibles and stuff. So you'll end up kind of grabbing all the gamer score like right at the end of our journey here. We are using our little bug friends in order to make our way to this ledge to the right and a little bit up. Feel free to freeze them if you need to and you can even make an anchor point on the wall if you want to just be able to jump right across at the end here. Pull yourself up onto the ledge. Bring your rope with you. Just a quick, quick reminder, you may not have the same amount of gamer score or achievements as me, but make sure you are working your way towards those 200 double jumps and those 50 stamina restores. But either way, you are well on your way to getting 100% following this video. Once you're up here, nothing around that corner, go across the bridge, throw your rope to bring the bridge down, finding a collectible directly in front of you. It is another letter. Make sure you grab it. And then from there, you can throw your rope to the point. You can start your hang. And you want to swing all the way across this huge gap here. And your goal is to kind of hit some of these rocks that are on the wall next to this lower point level right here. Luckily, your rope should be more than long enough. so you might, But you might need to do a little jump at the end just to make sure you get enough distance. The jump always seems to kind of extend your rope just a little bit extra. I'm gonna make a quick anchor point just because there's a weird little angle drop right there. And then I'm gonna pull my rope with me and work my way across this bridge, following the edge here to my next collectible on the ground, which is our beloved shell. I'll see you in 30 seconds. Directly next to our shell, we can also find a letter collectible. So once we're able to, let's back out of this. It's going blurry, so that should be right now. Make sure you keep your eye out over here to the right-hand side. You'll find a small ledge that juts out into the cavern where you can find your next letter. From here, we're going to be doing a little bit of climbing, but go through this tunnel. As you exit the tunnel, look to your right hand side, follow the ledge. This will lead you to a zip line. Take that zip line. On the other side of the zip line, if you follow the path right around the corner, you will find an elevator. Make sure you ride that elevator. Once you're at the top of the elevator, you can then walk down this uh, long hallway. Turn to the right as you enter the next open area. And here you'll find an anchor point on the wall. And that's where you'll want to begin your climb up this crevasse. Once you make your way to the top, there will be a ledge on your left hand side. Not trying to speed run the game, but hopefully I'm moving quick enough that I'm not being annoying, but slow enough that you're able to keep up. Once from once you're on this ledge, look up and across to find an anchor point. You'll need to jump up and pull yourself up a little bit, but if you time it correctly, you should be able to get to the ledge right in front of you and across in order to uh, pull yourself up. You'll find yourself next to a bridge, which you can pull down. You may need to take a couple of extra swings in order to make that gap, which is totally okay. Make your way to the elevator and ride it up yet again. Think of how much climbing we've done in this game. We must be so high right now. 
Step off the elevator and then look to your left. You'll find a small gap with an anchor point above you. Jump across this gap in order to find our next collectible, which is a cairn on this side. We're not actually supposed to be here. Uh, this is kind of a very optional area. So make sure you grab this as we're about to end the chapter. And if you did miss anything, it's not a huge deal, but you will have to replay, um, you know, a significant part of the chapter if you do miss a collectible. Go up this staircase to your right-hand side towards the flowers on the wall. Use up on the D-pad to spawn the petals. Get to the next plant. Press up on the D-pad to spawn more petals. This should lead you to some rocks. Once you transition from uh, petals to rock, you might want to make an anchor point. Because we will be making a big jump across and it's pretty easy to miss. So it's good to have a little bit of a backup. Once you're here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to that plant on the left side of my screen. So I'm going to make an anchor point. I'm going to swing to that plant. And then I'm going to activate it by pressing up on the D-pad. And jumping towards it, hanging on to it. And it will pull me up most of the way here. You don't need to do that all in like one motion, but you definitely have to use this vine in order to allow you to get to the next set of rocks that you'll need to climb here. And then you'll hop up on this ledge, grab the rope with you, walk forward and interact with this structure. You may be familiar with it, but this pretty much signifies the end of a chapter, so to say. At this point, we only have chapters five and six to go. I think earlier in the video, I might have misspoke and said there were seven chapters, but there are six. Three was the longest. Four is probably the second longest. And then chapter five and six are actually on the shorter end and uh, more on like the cinematic end. We've actually completed, although we were only about 70% of the way through the game, we have completed a, a large bulk of the collectibles. So there's more gameplay and less collectibles coming up. But as the spark bugs here lift you up, you will transition scenes. And once you regain control of your character here in just a few seconds, you will begin chapter five, Mirage. If you are interested, as soon as we start this chapter, I'll open up the collectibles in the game just to make sure that you guys have kept up with me. There's, it's very unlikely you've missed anything if you've been following the video. But just to be safe, and just for your own peace of mind, we'll do that double check. And that way you can be confident going into the final portions of the game. That achievements and trophies are finally going to start popping for us. Chapter 5, Mirage. Let's quickly pause the game. Go to your gallery. We are missing three frescoes. And then in terms of letters, for the first tab of letters, we are only missing two. For Bianca letters, we are missing three. There's also cairns and altars that we're collecting though. Once you gain control of your character, you can walk forward. In chapter five, we are introduced into a new mechanic, which is these wind gusts. You can see these kind of flags and they're gonna show you the direction that the wind is traveling. 
and you're going to have to use that to your advantage in order to climb and make sure that they don't work against you. So for example here, the wind is pushing us up, which will allow us to double jump much higher than usual. However, if we were trying to jump to the right, for example, we wouldn't be able to jump without also getting pushed up by the air. So that's something you will want to keep in mind. And jumping with these wind gusts can also work against your stamina a little bit and make it a little bit harder to climb. So the first thing you're going to want to do is reach this relay. The wind should automatically shift to the left for you, although you may have to wait for it to kind of cycle between directions. We are trying to go to the left right now. And we're going to wait for that wind. You can make a little bit of an anchor point, but you don't really need it. Once the wind is blowing, you should be able to make a jump across the much, much larger gap than we had earlier. Here you want to wait until the wind is going to the right. And you can make a little anchor point just in case you need it. Make sure you rest with your stamina. You don't want to get caught out here and have to catch yourself falling much, much further. There is a little bit of a relay here to the top right. We're going to wait for the wind to adjust a little bit. Get on to the relay once that wind is ready. Good to have that anchor just in case you do fall. And then you can start climbing up a little bit further. You'll make your way to this kind of windmill. Work your way across it. And you'll end up in the center section between these two wooden panels. You'll have to jump across. You can jump across the gap or just shimmy your way across. Actually much, much safer. Climb your way on up shimmy to the right towards the rocks and you'll end up at another windmill which you want to grab onto once you get that chance and watch out for the wind as it can make even very basic uh, navigation like this difficult at the relay you'll want to connect yourself up hang on to the windmill and then let it take you up up and to the right You'll find these blue ropes, and that's what our next little goal is. That should bring you up to a new pair of windmills. So grab onto the first one here and let it bring you up to the second windmill. Now here you want to be a little bit careful. There's some tricky collectibles hiding. Ignore the little bulbs and instead transfer from windmill to windmill. Instead of going to the left, we're actually going to go to the right. We will have to use the vines there as well as some wind mechanics in order to uh, successfully do this. Near the top of the windmill, there is a ledge you can grab to the right. Just watch out for the wind and make sure it's not blowing. If you do successfully grab this ledge, I would highly recommend an anchor point, waiting for the wind to die down, and then you can double jump up to the vine above you, and then double jump again, watching out for that stamina, which is probably now very, very low. Navigate up the vine to the right-hand side and pull yourself up, bringing your rope with you, and then going up the ladder. This is a completely optional section of the game, but there are four collectibles here, which is why I'm bringing you here. Untie your rope, and then walk up the ramp right next to where we enter the area from. Stick to the right-hand side, and you'll be able to find your letter here. Not many letters to go. Oh, sorry, this is a shell. So, as we know with uh, shells... Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy pure zen for the next 30 seconds. There's also a letter in this area. I thought the letter came first. There's four collectibles in this area. A shell, a letter, a fresco, and a cairn. So after we grab the shell, let's exit out of that cutscene. Continue up, hanging on the right-hand side. And up the ramp, up the stairs to the left, you can find the cairn. Drop down the ledge and go a little bit deeper into this cave. On the wall here, you'll be able to find a letter from Bianca. And then continue even deeper down this hallway to find your fresco. Making sure you know the drill by now. You press up for echo and then make sure it gets logged. You can then exit the area back the way you came. 
and we're actually going to have to navigate basically directly across the cliff face in the other direction. You can climb down and go back where you came from and then navigate, but you can take a little bit of a shortcut and try to do it from this edge right here. So we're going to connect ourselves to the wall here. We'll go down onto the ladder that's on the wall right next to it. We can basically let ourselves hang here. And from this hanging, we can go down and basically find a relay right under us. So we're going to grab that relay and interact with it as a little bit of a saving point. From this relay, you can feel free to hang down. Now from this relay, just let yourself hang down quite a bit. And you're going to want to run right and then wall run left. And hopefully if you can match that with the blowing of the wind, you should be able to reach this windmill here. Might take you a couple times to do that, but it shouldn't be too bad. Hang on to the bottom of the windmill and let it take you to the left. Don't climb to the relay just yet. The relay comes a little bit later on here. You can grab onto the ladder. And I'm going to make an anchor point right here. With the anchor set, you just want to wait for the wind to blow. You can see it on the screen or you can just uh, wait for one of the flags. And then jump left and the wind should blow you onto this platform. You will need the wind. You can actually wall run here as it'll block you. And once you're on here, you can grab yet another shell. And wait another 30 seconds for pure relaxation. Not many collectibles left in general. So, like I said at the beginning of the chapter, get ready for some of those unlocks to start popping. With the shell cinematic done, Let's quit out. And we kind of have to head back to where we came from. This time you can throw your rope to the midpoint and then try to basically swing across towards the ladder. Might take you a swing or two, but your goal is to end up at this relay temporarily. Hook up to the relay just so you don't run out of rope and you don't fall too far down. And we can continue climbing up. We're going to need a big double jump here, so we're going to wait for the wind to aid us in that journey. The wind's a little weird. It can uh, Sometimes it can be like perfectly what you need, and sometimes you're just sitting there waiting for uh, little spawns of stuff. Up on the D-pad at the top of the blue rope to get onto the plants here. Make sure you get both of them, and then you can transfer up onto the rock wall into your next relay position. Keep climbing using the rock face to the right and up. Lots of wind here, but it shouldn't really get in the way very much. Activate the plant, which will bring you around the corner. And then you should be able to pull yourself up to the very end here. And snatch your rope with you. Once up top, don't shimmy across just yet. Instead, enter the cave. Directly on your left, once you enter, small staircase with a letter. Make sure you grab that. Back out of this letter, and then continue further in front of yourself through the cave. Through the little door. And then to the left, go down the steps. At the bottom of the steps, you should notice a fresco. Interact with it before you move on. Turn around and head back through the door we came to get in, up the steps and to the right, past that letter we just grabbed. Make sure you grab that letter if you don't already have it. Up onto the ledge and then shimmy across. Get ready for that sweet, sweet sound that you know is coming soon. This should be your last letter of the game. After you shimmy across, go towards the hut inside of the kind of planter in front of the door. You should be able to find a letter here. 
read through it, back up, wait for that save icon, and this very rare achievement slash trophy, 1% of people approximately have it, should unlock, and then you can begin climbing this crevasse right up the middle. We're going to try to be pretty quick here. Little double jump might be required here, but make sure that you are not being impeded by the wind. I'm going to make an anchor point here and try to double jump to the vine before I echo it. You don't have to. It just might make it a little bit easier. A double jump here, watching out for the wind. It doesn't seem like the wind's going to affect us, but it definitely will. Just want to make sure it has stopped moving. There might have not actually been any wind there. What might have happened is that the flag got caught on the pole. We're going to wait until there's no obvious wind here before we do a quick double jump up to the vine, which we can grow using our echo, leading into a relay. Nice safety point before we continue up. Use the rocks to the left to continue upwards. There are a couple more flags here that should show you the wind, but don't immediately need it. And then you get to the top right here. Snatch your rope back up and begin walking forward. Now there are actually two more uh, letters. They're technically Bianca journals. Uh, I've been referring them to as basically the same thing because they show up so identically in the world. There's really not a great reason to differentiate between them. So let's go find the final two Bianca journals. Once you shimmy through the little cave, go forward and to the right, and you can find a Bianca journal entry, technically. And then our final kind of paper-based collectible, go back to where we came from a little bit. Near the entrance of that tunnel, you can drop down a small hole. In that hole, there is a journal entry, and if you pick it up and then back out, that's your last one. It's quite a long one but hopefully the achievement unlocks without an issue for you. Also, while you're here, turn and go deeper into this little cave system, down the hallway, down the small ledge, interacting with this fresco. Congratulations, yet another achievement for you. You're killing it. Back up, and let's go up the ledge we use to get into this area. Back up the ladder to get out. Do still have an altar and a cairn and some shells, but those will be grabbed before you know it. Go forward past the room, turn to the left on the ledge, look up to grab the rope point. And then you will want to kind of jump across and pull yourself up. This should be able to bring you towards these wooden ledges here. Double jump your way up to the next wooden ledge. Need to wait for there not to be wind that's blowing downward. You need that upward wind. And then there will be a vine above you, but you will need more upward wind. Feel free to wait for yourself to grab the vine before you activate it with an echo. And then that should be able to get you to the next little piece of wood you will need to move across. Watch out for that stamina again. Like I said, that's kind of one of the biggest struggles of Chapter 5. The waiting for the wind and the lack of stamina. Transfer from the wood onto the rocks. Transfer up to the rocks kind of above you until you're pretty much hanging from the ledge. Again, watching that stamina. It gets real low and real sketchy in these areas until you make your way to this relay. Connect to the relay and give yourself a little break. Now from this relay, a little bit of a tricky collectible. You actually want to let yourself go and make your rope as long as possible. You'll eventually drop down onto a ledge kind of underneath you, and you'll notice that there is a flower here. You'll have to do a little bit of a swing into this side cave. We could have went into here earlier doing a very difficult 
um, section of uh, anchor points. This is a much easier way to do it. Enter into here. Do not grab the altar first unless you want to forget about this shell as you enter on your left. It's easy to miss it on your way in, so I recommend just grabbing it as soon as you see it. This will allow you to get, you know, this will just let you not have to worry about it uh, after you turn the altar. Luckily for us, this is also our final shell of the game. So you will get an achievement or trophy once this little cinematic ends. I believe the achievement or trophy here is going to be called uh, Sound Archaeologist. I told you once things started popping, they would go so, so quickly. Back out of the cutscene, it should unlock another 1% achievement. And then turn and look to the altar in the center of the room, spinning the altar. Guess what? Another achievement here for us. Cycle Celebration. Now we can head out of this cave, and we basically have to head all the way back up to the relay we were at before. I'm going to recommend grabbing onto the vine and extending the vine, riding it up most of the way back to kind of where we need to go. Definitely very helpful. There will be a little bit of a split here, so you want to take the split to go even higher. And then here you'll end up back on that kind of upside down wall we were on before where you're hanging from it. Climb your way back up to this relay, which is the relay we use to get to those collectibles the first time. From that relay, navigate up into the right and there will be a crevasse kind of right in the middle of the screen there. And that's what we're going to be aiming for. The wind does work very much against you in this section, so feel free to take lots of stamina breaks, uh, especially when the wind is blowing directly down on you. You can't climb very much when the wind's blowing down on you anyways, so it's better just to regain your stamina, wait for that wind to stop moving as much, and then start climbing again. Obviously, the faster you climb, kind of the better uh, in between these breaks of uh, the gusts and the wind and everything. But it can be quite difficult to climb in this section if you're not careful. Our final cairn collectible right around the corner from us. Snatch your rope up with you. Walk forward. Look to your left. There will be this large cavern. Walk towards it and keep an eye out to your left for a small ledge. Here, interact with the cairn. This should be your last one. Unlocking the common ground achievement slash trophy. And now that we're done most of that, we can walk forward. Looking towards the large opening. And there is the interactable item that has ended all the chapters previously. And it will end this one just the same. Press Y to stand on the platform. This should begin a cutscene that uh, lasts, you know, roughly five minutes or maybe three minutes. And at the end of this cutscene, we do begin chapter six. I'll rejoin you with my the sound of my beautiful voice, hopefully, in chapter six. We're really in the home stretch. Only about maybe 15 minutes to go before we're done the game.
All right, so once we kind of gain access to our character here, we're going to pull ourselves up using the right bumper. We're then going to be able to climb the side of this animal here. You can make a little bit of an anchor point there, but get up onto the ladder. This is almost more of an interactive cutscene than it is a gameplay segment. But this is required just to get us towards Chapter 6, which should start any second now. Chapter 6 has a little bit of a unique name that I'm not even sure how to necessarily pronounce. Uh, but in terms of the, the environment of Chapter 6, it's the ice area. And it takes place inside of a crater. There's a couple of achievements slash trophies that have a direct reference to a crater. And we'll be grabbing those um, during this chapter. In case you are wondering, we have collected our last collectible at this point. So you don't really have to worry about those. But there are definitely a couple of things you can miss if you're not careful before the end of the game. The first of which is a missable achievement slash trophy called a faint glimmer for holding ballast close in the crater. Hold the left and the right trigger to bring him in tight and then let that go. And there it should unlock and you can begin to walk forward here. You're going to be working your way down. It's a very linear path. On your way, you may spot a couple of creatures. I'll I'll mention them when I see them. But you're basically just making your way towards that large tower in the center of the crater. Over here on the left side, you can try to press up on the D-pad to send an echo. Didn't seem to work, but that's okay. I'll show you where to do it more reliably. Keep heading down the mountain along the main path. This is our final uh, obstacle and objective in, in the game, the large tower in front of us. As you're about to open up the area, you'll notice that there are these kind of 
two things on the left and the right. So if we move up to the right over here. Get as close as you can. And try to press up on the D-pad. That should unlock the Awakened Memory achievement for using an Echo on a Frozen Ballast Crater. Not exactly sure what you're supposed to do for that, but that seems to be the best method to just get it to pop. We're then going to approach this tower, and you'll notice that this tower is just littered with what seem to be star constellations. There are two types of constellations, though. There are ones that have these kind of more obvious gold circles, and then there's these ones that are you won't be able to hold on to. But basically, you'll have to light up every constellation on this tower. Approach this rock, and as you do, your character here should put down the ballast. And we're going to climb to the very top of this tower, making sure to grab every kind of constellation we can on our way up. And you'll notice that when you do grab onto one, it should light up. But for example, this one on the far right, you won't be able to grab onto it. Because it doesn't have the correct kind of grips on it. So we're just going to be making sure to grab the correct ones. And we're basically going to have to grab all of the correct ones. So you can't really make too many mistakes here. You'll want to double jump up into the left to grab the next one. However, I'd recommend that you just put an anchor down as it can be a little difficult to get it to trigger. Do a little bit of a wall run and you should be very easily able to grab the uh, next uh, constellation here. From there, we're going to want to work our way to the right here to the next constellation. I believe these are constellations. I'm pretty certain about it and you'll probably notice that you kind of are forced to touch all of them on your way up there's not really a good reliable way up this tower without using the ones that you're supposed to use watch out for that stamina of course I've definitely mentioned it before hopefully it's a mechanic you already know about I'm gonna place down an anchor just in case we have a little bit of a double jump here to the left which can sometimes lead to a unfortunate uh, miss. And we're going to grab our way up onto the ledge above me. Barely had enough stamina to get up there. But once I did, make sure you grab your rope with you. And then exit out the other side of the tower. Buckle up into the tower. And then we're going to be doing the same on this side. But we're going to be starting from as low as we can go. Uh, making sure we grab all the ones kind of below us here before we start moving up the uh, the tower. Be careful with your stamina. It is pretty easy to overcommit yourself. And then your the maximum of your bar starts draining and draining and draining. And before you know it, you can't really hold on to anything. I'm going to place a small anchor here. I'm going to swing from right to left. You're free to freestyle this however you think is going to work in your favor. There's a couple here on the right that we need to grab. I'm going to put another anchor here. Just because it's a good place to pull myself up right up into the middle of the area. Going to have to get a little swing action going to get to this next one. And then we can uh, continue going up to the left. Just making sure we kind of grab all the shapes along the way. Keeping in mind that the ones that aren't the right color, you won't be able to grab. Which basically just means you have to get creative to get across certain gaps and areas. We're going to go back to our anchor point here. I'm going to actually break it off. Recharge my stamina. And let's continue up this tower. I'm going to jump uh, up and then anchor myself. And then I should be able to wall run to the right to grab... More shapes here. A double jump directly above me uh, to grab more shapes again. I don't know why the game isn't letting me do that. Very low on stamina, which I said is probably something you want to avoid. 
But at this point, we're in the situation we're in. So we're just going to try our best. Going to make another anchor point here. Should be able to wall run to the right. To grab the next little constellation. And then from here, we're going to be able to transfer... You don't have enough rope length here. We have a couple too many anchors, unfortunately. I'm going to try to double jump directly up and above myself. I did able, I did manage to get the next constellation. And I'm going to try to climb into the hole that we're supposed to kind of exit the area from. I'm going to try to get up there just to see if I can get a nice little rest in. There's a couple more constellations above and to the right that we didn't quite grab yet, though. But I'm going to come up here. I'm going to grab my rope, regain my stamina, and I'm going to make a new rope so I can grab a couple more of these things we need to grab to light up the tower. That's actually the only one we missed, so that's pretty lucky. Once we're in here, we can grab the rope with us. Go into this area. We're going to apply our rope here so we can kind of jump across this gap. I think you can grab these uh, little frozen bugs on the wall, but you don't really have to right here. You can just drop down and then use the staircase to go up. And then this should let you exit out of the tower again. On this end of the tower, you want to buckle yourself in. And drop as low as possible to get a couple of the constellations we missed. Primarily this one down and to the right. Make sure you grab this one just underneath where we started. And then we should be able to start working our way up that tower again. Hopefully not running out of stamina or anchor points here. We're going to make our jump to the right, to the next constellation. And we're going to go again to the right here. This might, this one might require a little bit of a double jump, so let's regain our stamina and make an anchor point. We can then transfer to the one kind of above us, but in the middle. I'm not very careful on that stamina, but this climb is actually a little bit easier than the last one. And there's a point we can rest halfway up. Here I'm going to make another anchor point, because this allows me to wall run to the left. To grab the next constellation. I might run out of rope here, but that's okay. I can always just kind of wind myself back to where I came from. And I'm going towards this kind of sun in the middle. It's going to be a great place to replenish my rope and get some rest. Wind my rope back up and make a new connecting point. Make sure I don't leave any uh, anything behind down into the uh, right. And then we can start making our way up the tower. This should be uh, an, a decent anchor point. Jump to the left and pull yourself up all the way to the top. Bring your rope up with you. Walk forward. Jump up the ledge. Go up the staircase. Congratulations, you're on your way to the end of the game very soon here. You should only have one achievement left, which is for completing the game. And here, to end off Chapter 6, you want to go up to the interactable object and interact with it. Enjoying the final cinematic of the game and your conclusion to everything we've been doing. If you do only need one achievement or trophy now, it's for completing the game. And it should unlock once we do that in a few minutes from now. If you are missing any collectibles, there will be a chapter select available to you in the menu once you beat the game. You may also be missing the 200 double jumps and the 50 stamina resets. You can very easily grind that pretty much anywhere 
Chapter 2 seems to be a pretty good place to grind it. A cute ending to a cute game. I hope you did enjoy it and your time with me here today. If you think I deserved it, then drop a like on the video. If not, that's okay too. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And I hope you did enjoy. Peace.